Okay, so I'm going to show you a casting example. Now, as mentioned in the lecture and in the text, it is a dangerous technique because you're simply uh, forcing a data type to be another data type. Okay, but I mean, in some cases it might be needed, but I think you should uh, try to avoid doing it uh, as much as possible. Uh, just try to use uh, data values within the correct range of whatever it is that you're attempting to do. But I know uh, some of the homework problems, it does specifically tell you um, to use a specific data type so that you're forced to cast to get some results from equations just because it's testing. Um, I mean, the problem is designed to test uh, your ability to know how to actually cast data from one type to another. So I'm going to go ahead and do an example. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start off this time by putting in my info up top. So my name and info all go right there. All right, and I'm gonna say public, uh, wait, sorry, static, public class. The name of my class is casting, uh, casting example. I'll put those color braces and then I'm gonna add in my main method header. So public, static, void, main, string array, arguments, open close color braces. And come inside of here and let's think of an example um so i want to do something to where i have some integer values so like just say we're just you're prompting the user for um some grades okay now at the end of chapter two we do talk about using the scanner class to take an input so you know what? i'm gonna go ahead and just um make this program designed to take in input so i'm gonna go ahead and input the Excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to import the scanner class. Wait. Scanner. Okay, and I'm going to come over here and make a scanner object. And we'll talk more about the scanner object in chapter two toward the end. Um, I know for my online class, I give you the sections in order, but in my face to face class, I do introduce the scanner class early. Um, but I'm going to create a scanner object right now. So I'm going to say scanner, and I'm going to say my scan is equal to new scanner and i'm going to pass in the keyboard which is system in and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to have an integer for um actually it's gonna be a final integer i'm gonna say final uh, int that means it's a constant so this is going to be the number um num of uh test okay let's just say there's three tests and I'm going to go ahead and put um, an integer for oops, uh, test one, test two, and test three. So I want to prompt the user for three test values. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the average. I'm going to give out the average of the test values, but it's all going to be done in integer math. So that means there's not going to be any fractional part to the average or the user would not be allowed to enter any fractional part to his grade. So I'm going to say system that out that print line. I'm going to say something like, um, let's compute your test average. All right, and then I'm going to right here. I'm going to tell the user to enter test grade one. He's going to enter it right there. I'm going to go ahead and make this a print. That way, uh, the entry happens on the same line as a prompt. I think it looks a lot neater than using a print line where, where the entry happens underneath the prompt. But I'm going to do this three times. So I'm going to have test one, test two, and test three and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store the value of test one whatever they entered I'm gonna take it from the keyboard so I'm gonna say next int and I'm gonna store it into the variable test one so I'm also gonna do that for test two and for test three all right and let me change this to test two and test three now the next thing I'm gonna do is compute the average and let me go ahead and make one more value for the average. Um, just to say I didn't know any better. So I'm going to say, you know what? I want the average to be a float because I want to show them the fractional part. So I'm going to say average. 
All right. All right, so what, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute my average. I'm going to say the average is the sum of the three test grades. <sighs> what the heck? Test one, test two, test three, all divided by the number of tests. Okay, then I'm going to get my value and just say system done out. That, print line I'll put some spaces so that it looks nice and I'll just say your test average is and then print out their test average which will be in the variable they get average all right be in that variable and I'm gonna go ahead and compile and run this program so control one to compile control two to run so it's asking me for three test grades and let's just I'm gonna do something easy that I can figure out right off the bat a 50 for the first one dang it I put a line an extra line in there so it's all just a string got all confused wasn't a number so it barked back at me uh, there is a way to handle entries like this uh, but that is not talked about until chapter 11 of the book which is not covered in the current course that I'm that you're, you're taking so that will be in the second part where you handle exceptions but let me go and try this again run it again and this time i'll be very careful about what i accidentally touch so i'm going to say 50 for the first grade and 75 for the second grade and 100 for the third grade and the average of that is 75 it said 75.0 so it's giving me the assumption that it's it's giving me uh, the fractional part of whatever values that I'm entering so it's actually retaining that um, information but it actually isn't because when I'm doing my math here all these three variables are integers and this is an integer so whenever we do math with integers any fractional part is completely ignored now in that case that value was right because the result of that um, average is doesn't have any decimal places but if you do something that does have decimal places then we will in fact have uh, inaccuracy or lose um, that part of the value right we won't have the fractal part of it so let me go ahead and run this one more time so this time I'll just say he made a 90 a 93 and um, I don't know 94 I'm gonna press enter okay and that the value of that is 92 so when I punch that into our my calculator again okay, this is we'll test it out it's always good to test to make sure you get the correct results so I'm gonna just type out calculator and I took in 90 plus 93 plus 94 that's what I got and I divided that by three and I should have got 92.33333 and um, it is a float so um, it would not have so many digits uh, float values I believe have seven significant digits is what we talked about in chapter two um, so you should only see seven threes after this um, but we got just 92 by itself so the average is not actually retaining the decimal place okay so what's happening here is this math you did take in integers the math is actually um, losing the fractional part whenever we uh, do this division here because the result of summing three integers is an integer and that number is also an integer so if one of these values was a float then the entire application or excuse me the entire equation right would result in a floating point value and retain the decimal place okay so what i'm going to do is you have to choose one of these to cast to a float it could be either one it could be both but one of something in here has to be casted to a float so that when java is performing this math it knows okay well i'm going to go ahead and convert this entire result of this equation to a float so i'm going to come over here and just cast the result of this sum to a float 
and now when I compile and run my program I'm gonna enter the same values 90 93 and 94 you can see now that I do have my fractional part of my number okay so that's how you do that okay um, now the real problem here is that if you want the average to be floating point then shouldn't the um, entry also be floating point right instead of taking in whole numbers for your test grades is there a chance that maybe the test grades have fractional fractional points meaning instead of like getting a 93 on the test you got a 93.5 or 93.1 um, I mean that's entirely up to you whoever's programming this but if if you do want the test grades to come in as integers then leave them as an integer but then if you want to retain the fractional part of the average when you're doing your math you need to convert one of these values to a floating point before um, that division okay I didn't have to do the the, the sum I could have just converted the um, the num of test to be a floating point I could come over here and just casted this to a floating point and I would have gotten the same results if I compile and run and enter the same values 90 93 and 94 you can see the result is the same okay so that is casting um, you have to be careful with it because sometimes um, students might think okay well I know I want this to retain my fractional part they don't think about doing the casting inside of the actual math equation they might just do it like after you know after the after the division took place and then the result would still be a uh, floating point okay so for an example of that would be a wrong way to do this would be okay well I'm gonna cast this entire result to a float so I'm gonna so by wrapping this whole thing in parentheses what's happening is I'm doing my integer math all first so once that division happens you've already lost your decimal place okay and then you're trying to cast the result to a float which is this right here is just a 92 but then when you cast it to a float it's gonna be a 92.0 right so it didn't really do anything because this is already a float so that value was already taken in as a float but the math was done with integer variables so that's where the precision was lost right there okay so if I were to compile and run enter the same values 92 93 94 you can see that I have 92.0 so I lost that fractional part okay so you have to be careful with that um, you actually want the conversion uh, from an int to a float to happen before you actually do the division of the integers so wherever you want to put this um, I kind of like to put it in front just because it seems like a safe thing to do but you have to be careful with that so this float right here is being applied to these integers being summed so after these three integers get summed then they converted to a float and then they are divided by number of tests right but since this is a float right here that division will retain the fractional part.